Hi, welcome to Brandon Rainer School of Natural Therapies. Today I'd like to talk about the uh, Canadian massage industry and our place in that industry. There's been a lot of controversy since we first started teaching in Canada. We started teaching in Canada about 2002 and uh, before that of course we were teaching in Australia for several years uh, where we taught everywhere around Australia, ta taught in England, taught in the United States, New Zealand and uh, a few other places in the early uh, period of 2000 to 2002. But 2002 we started to teach in Canada. Uh, we teach our 5, 10 and 15 day intensive courses and in Canada we seem to have rubbed up against the uh, conventional massage industry especially in Ontario and British Columbia. So looking at what's going on in the Canadian massage industry we can see that uh, we have what they call the registered massage therapists, also known as RMTs. So these are especially predominant in, uh, in Ontario, British Columbia, and I think it's uh, Nova Scotia, I think, now might have uh, RMTs as well. There's other provinces that are considering going this way. So we have a philosophical objection to the registering of the term massage therapist. Um, and also we have a very different philosophy about massage than the conventional RMT industry does. So basically an RMT does between two and a half thousand and three thousand hours of training. Most of that training tends to be making a massage therapist into like a mini doctor but who specializes in massage. Okay, so one of the reasons that's often quoted by the RMT industry and the RMT associations uh, for their desire to heavily regulate the massage industry is to gain the respect of the medical profession. So that's something that they often say and that's why they then go into extensive study of anatomy physiology. Of course there's other reasons for the study of anatomy physiology. Um, but one of the reasons that they, they like to be able to speak just like a doctor. So with all the same terminology for the body, the same terminology for diseases, that sort of thing. Now all that sounds fair enough. And it sounds great. That's great. We're getting a high standard of training. And this is one of the things they often point out. They believe that Canada has one of the highest standards of training. Standards of training, they call it. Uh, of massage in the world. And that Canada is leading the way. Now I have a problem with this because massage has no history uh, in Canada. There's no native tradition of massage that I know of. Perhaps there is amongst the native Indians, but it certainly wouldn't be the same sort of massage that's practiced by RMTs if there was. Um, the main problem I have with this is that massage has thousands and thousands of years of history in many different cultures. I'm um, based presently in Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii has a very long and extensive history of massage, as do other Polynesian cultures. But especially Hawaii with its Lomi Lomi practice by the kahunas, the, the healers of old. This was not done by extensive study of anatomy and physiology. It was actually a spiritual practice. It was a, as well as a, a physical massage. It was done through chants, through prayer, through holding of hands and, and projecting the spirit of aloha, which means the spirit of love. That's not something you study with anatomy and physiology. So the whole history of Hawaiian massage has uh, got very little to do with anything that the RMTs would study. The concepts, the philosophy behind Hawaiian spirituality, which is very much inherent in the Hawaiian system of massage. You cannot distinguish between philosophy that a people hold about who or what is the human being and their method of healing because that's very much based upon that philosophy. So we can't just take Hawaiian massage strokes the way, okay, we do some Lomi strokes like that and that does a particular thing. Sure, you can do that, but you're not really necessarily practicing Hawaiian massage just by taking the techniques. You have to understand what is the philosophy? What are we trying to do here? So that's something that RMTs don't study and they don't recognize because their, their attempt to become accepted by the medical profession means that they're accepting a very, what I would call, materialistic view of the human being. That we are just muscles, bones, brain, um, etc. You know, the lymphatic system. But actually there's a lot more to it and that's what traditional systems of massage emphasize. If we go and we look at China, the whole system of Tuina of Chinese massage is based on the movement of qi in the meridians. 
This is not something that's studied, again, through Western medicine. Western medicine does not accept the existence of qi. This is one of the great debates I had with uh, some uh, person in uh, Toronto named Mike. He has this uh, website, Mike's Skeptic, uh, Weekly Skeptic Rant, or something like this. And he's very uh, aggressive toward people that believe in qi, because he doesn't. And so he's also then following the same philosophy that the RM, many of the uh, RMT associations hold, is that we should just appeal to the Western medical concept of, of medicine and of health. Again, I don't accept this. I think there's many different ways of viewing the human being. Certainly Hawaii does not view, traditional Hawaiian culture does not view the human being like that. Hawaii, Hawaiian culture recognizes that we are inherently a spirit and we are encased in this body. And then when we heal somebody, we work on a mind-body-spirit level. This is the same in China, this is the same in India, this is the same in Thailand, the same in Japan, throughout most Oriental cultures and many cultures actually um, that, uh, that were existing in Europe too. Perhaps they were wiped out in various purges, various Middle Age uh, attacks upon them and destruction of their culture, but they've certainly existed in Europe before and throughout the world. So why is it that this one view of massage has come to dominate in these Canadian RMT associations? And it has no historical basis. There's not thousands of years of history of this so-called medical massage. It's, it's new. It's totally new. And to me, personally, that's fine if people want to practice that. I've got no problem with it. But why don't they compete on the open market with people that are practicing different forms of cultural massage? We'll go into that a little bit later about the whole thing about why the uh, free market is actually better um, to regulate the massage industry, especially if you have some <coughs> considerations for just professional conduct. But we'll go into that a little bit later. But right now I'd like to talk about more about, say for example, Ayurveda. Ayurveda is a many, many thousands of years old system of medicine from India. So again, in India, the, the, in Indian medicine, Ayurveda, the main emphasis is on the spirit. Is, is if you have a healthy spirit, that's the most important thing. And then the subtle body, the mind and the emotions, then the physical body. So this is why we see with a, a, a lot of Western medicine, they don't, a person may not feel happy within, but they go to a doctor and the doctor says, well, there's nothing wrong with you. Well, there is something wrong. It's just that you can't identify it through Western medicine. It may be able to be identified through other forms of medicine, through naturopathic medicine, through Dr. Bach and his flower remedies, for example, through homeopathy, or through Ayurveda, through Chinese medicine, through Thai medicine, through Hawaiian medicine. So there's not just one form of medicine in the world. We, ha we come from a planet that has so many different cultures. And to think that one culture has got everything right in terms of its medical system is ridiculous. It's arrogant. It's incredibly arrogant. And that's what I see permeating the... RMT associations that are trying to stop other forms of therapy. There was an injunction uh, in Toronto or in Ontario in general that these RMT associations tried to, in, to put against our school for practicing. That was based on the fact that uh, we aren't registered as a private career college in Ontario. Now when it came to further investigation it found out that if your courses are less than 40 hours, which our three courses are, you don't have to be registered. But of course then it's all about, these RMT associations are all about trying to shut people like our school down. They also try to attack about eight or so different shiatsu schools. Okay, so they don't like the fact that people are practicing shiatsu. So again, shiatsu is the traditional uh, form of massage practiced in Japan. Shi means finger, su means pressure point. So again, it's focused on chi. It's focused on the fact that we have meridians, we have life energy flowing through our body. So again, that conflicts with their theory of appealing to modern Western medicine, where we just are bones, bodies, and a totally material-based being. So this conflict that we're having, uh, not just us, but other schools are having with these RMT associations, comes down to a very important question of health freedom in Canada. Is it that one cultural approach should dominate? Canada has always been a country of many different cultures, from the English, French, and Indians, to now it's hundreds of people live in, hundreds of different cultures live in Canada. Why not, if we're forward-thinking people, think about why don't we draw the best from different cultures, but also, why don't we allow people the freedom to choose? We allow people the freedom to choose their own religion. We allow people to, the freedom to choose their own foods. 
Why not allow people the freedom to choose their own method of healing? If some people like the medical system of massage, great. Why don't they go? But other people may like to experience a massage from somebody that practices Hawaiian massage. They might like to experience somebody that practices Japanese shiatsu massage, or Chinese massage, or Thai massage. Or they might like to practice, or they, sorry, they might like to experience a massage from somebody that practices our form of massage, which is a combination of those plus a lot of techniques I've come up with myself. I, I draw a lot. My training has been in Ayurvedic medicine from India. It's been in Chinese medicine. It's been in Shiatsu. I live in Hawaii, and I have a lot of uh, association with Hawaiian healers, and I understand their philosophy. Um, so why isn't it that I'm allowed to come up with something that's a creative uh, mixture of those different styles, plus my own techniques, plus a sim simpler philosophy combining all those different approaches? And people should be able to try that. Why is it that these people are trying to stop me training people? Is it for safety? That's what they would say. Excuse me, we've trained people all over the world. We've got 10,000 graduates. There's nobody complaining that we're not safe. Obviously, with any activity you do in life, there's always different risks. It's not to say that good massage can never have a side effect. It can. People can experience a healing crisis. We recognize that, where toxins are stirred up in their body. So somebody who's had a lot of toxins, you massage them, they may feel worse before they get better. And that's something that has to do with the release of those toxins from sitting in the fat, from in the muscle, that sort of thing. And then they're stirred up into the bloodstream. They could then cause a headache. They could cause nausea. Some people can bruise through massage. It's not to say that massage can never have side effects or a person can't feel worse before they get better. That's definitely true. But there's no, there's no evidence of harm compared to if you're going to regulate every activity that could possibly cause harm, then really people shouldn't be going in motor cars. Shouldn't, you know, people shouldn't be doing anything because there's any, any risk of harm. That's not it. People like to use that, that excuse that, oh, we're going to protect you in order to control you. you know, that's a very common excuse that obviously governments use all the time. Governments love to say, well, we're, we're doing this to protect you. Meanwhile, they're taking away your freedom. So we've all seen many examples of that in the recent years, uh, as well as throughout history. And so here we see a similar example again. There's no evidence of harm. And yet these people are trying to say that we've got to control people, and also for their own reputation, because they think that uh, we've got to uphold this reputation that we're the most educated massage therapists in the world. Now again, I, I question that. I question how you can claim to be the most educated massage therapist in the world when there's no um, component of the study that an RMT goes through that studies any of the cultures that have a historical um, massage tradition. Okay? They don't study Hawaiian massage, they don't study Thai, they don't study Indian or Ayurvedic massage or Chinese massage, except as an optional extra. So when I was in Toronto, I got different massages from people and I asked about their training. And I asked about their knowledge of oriental medicine and people said, no, I didn't study that. That was an optional extra. So I'm not saying some RMTs don't have that, but that was an optional extra. Okay, so that's my point there. That should not be an optional extra and anybody learning, if they're going to spend two and a half thousand hours or three thousand hours learning massage, you should learn extensively, extensively the historical traditions of these forms of massage rather than just learn Western medical approaches. Okay, there's many different systems of medicine in the world. Okay, every culture has its form of medicine. And why should one culture think that theirs is better than another? They have that right to think it, but they shouldn't, in a multicultural country like Canada, force their point of view onto other people. What it should be is that the free market should dominate. So, for example, with the massage industry in Canada, it should be that we should train people, and then if those students are good, they will compete in the open market, which means that they will massage somebody, and if that person likes their massage, they will then come back and receive more. And they will tell their friends. And this is how, in any country with free market regulation of the massage industry, it works. Okay, we train people in Australia, and we have done for uh, 12 years now. We've got thousands of graduates, and that's how it works in Australia. It works like that in England. It works like that in Ireland. It works like that in certain U.S. states where there is no regulation. It works like that in any country where there's no regulation. If you're good, you will continually build up your business and you'll get more and more clients and you will succeed. If you're not very good, what will happen is somebody comes for a massage and they go, I didn't enjoy that massage or it wasn't effective or for some reason I don't want to go back. 
and they're not going to tell people, so gradually your business will go out of business because it costs you money usually or effort to bring people in for their first treatment. You have to advertise or you have to have a premises where people can come in to get their treatments. Okay, so that all costs you money or time or effort. So you can't continually do that unless you're just working in the tourist industry and you've got somebody else bringing in the clients for you and then the, the quality of the massage doesn't matter. But for the vast majority of practitioners, that's not the case. Okay, they're working in a private practice in a city or a town and it all depends on client satisfaction. This is the most free market of all professions. We're not going and working, there's not many massage therapists working in hospitals or for the government. It's all about the free market. It's about are your clients happy with the treatment? So this is how it should be assessed, and that's how the quality of our training should be assessed against these Canadian massage schools. So just because they do 2,500 hours or 3,000 hours, actually it doesn't make it better, okay? Quantity does not always equal quality. Sometimes it can actually sidetrack people. So people that are so caught up in their head and naming, looking at a human being as a whole system of muscles and bones, maybe they miss out on actually relating to that person as a real spirit, as, a, as an individual. Okay, maybe they miss out on that spirit of what they would emphasize in Hawaiian massage of relating to people with a spirit of aloha, of, of open-heartedness, okay? So there's many things that actually sometimes over-education can make it so that you're not seeing, what's the old expression? You can't see the, the, uh, the tree for the forest or the forest for the trees. You can't see that individual, the most simple thing because your mind is so complicated with so many other things. That's my point about a lot of their training. They overcomplicate things and they then make it so that they only see things in terms of a particular view on life. So say for example, we could look at different diseases. Now there's different reasons why people get diseases and in Chinese medicine they may name something completely differently um, than they would in Western medicine. So there could be many different reasons for say for example asthma. There could be different reasons in Chinese medicine why a person would get uh, indigestion. There could be a different reasons why a person gets a headache. Okay, so their approach may be that there may be some wind blocking um, one of the channels leading to the head and that's causing a headache. That's very different than Western medicine. So, but we all know, I mean, the, the success of acupuncture, for example, going in the United States, there was six acupuncture schools or something like that in the early 1970s. Now there's three or four hundred, uh, maybe a thousand acupuncture schools. Certainly a huge number of acupuncture practitioners throughout the Western world, Australia, Canada, the UK. So a lot of people are accepting that acupuncture helps them with problems that Western medicine can't help. That's also because they look at things from another philosophical perspective about how the human being exists in this world, or who or what is the human being. So we're looking at them as a spiritual person with life energy or chi moving through their body, through the different meridians, and then that manifests as a physical body. Okay, so we look at the elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether, that are existing in a person. So modern Western medicine tends to just emphasize earth and water, perhaps. You know, the physical body and perhaps the movement of the fluids in the body. And then, you know, for, for more of the uh, psychological aspects, you get a psychiatrist or a psychologist who's completely different than the GP or the, the, the general practitioner or the doctor. Um, they're, 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 not, they're too specialized and they don't see the person as a whole. And this is what we see a lot happening in Western medicine. It's like there's no practitioner that's just working on the individual as a whole person. Okay, so we have our specialists in the ears, nose, and throat. We have a specialist in the mind. We have a specialist in this particular area and that particular area. And that's how the RMT industry also would like to fit in. They would like to fit in as part of the medical bureaucracy, part of the whole medical system. But actually, again, I don't see being a massage therapist like that. I see that a massage therapist can be more than that. That's why we've recently changed what we do to call it Rainer Naturopathic Massage. Because I see a massage therapist as a, as a, as a holistic practitioner who looks at many different problems, from the psychological to the physical, from bones to muscles, uh, from many different angles, we can help people. And the whole interrelationship of it, so the interrelationship of emotional problems with physical problems. This is again something what they call psychosomatic uh, um, disorders in Western medicine, but they don't deal with very well. They'll just give somebody a, if somebody's got nervous anxiety, maybe they give them a sedative, but that then causes more problems. They don't actually deal with the root cause of it. Whereas our massage can deal with that. We do a lot of deep abdominal massage and that affects people's emotions. 
So a lot of Western medicine doesn't understand that. They don't understand the connection between the subtle body, which is the mind and the emotions, and the physical body. Whereas Chinese medicine does and has done for thousands of years. And so do other forms of medicine. And they all have a different angle on it. But why shouldn't people not be able to study those systems of medicine and come up with something new and creative and keep it simple for people? So this is my point. This is what we do. We keep things simple for people. Uh, I've had extensive studies. I've done my four years of naturopathy. I've done you know, two years of Chinese herbal medicine, a year and a half of shiatsu. I've done two years of Ayurvedic medicine. I've studied meditation and yoga from India. I've studied many different systems of meditation, yoga, I've studied uh, integrative breath therapy, all these different kinds of things. But I've come up with a system of massage that is mostly based on these um, oriental philosophies, but also with some elements of Hawaiian and, and, and what's common to many cultures in, in this planet, which is that we are a mind, body, spirit, and that we need to integrate these different facets. And the way I teach, I like to teach people in a nice and simple and easy to understand way. There's many different systems of language in the world that you could encase your particular philosophy of medicine in. So for example, Western medicine is often encased in a Latin uh, terminology for the body and for disease conditions. Whereas Chinese medicine will be obviously um, encased in the Chinese language. Ayurveda is encased in Sanskrit. So Hawaiian has got its Hawaiian concepts. Aloha and different things like that. But why not bring them into, I, what I like to do is bring them into simple English. Some of these complicated things which are just describing certain things in the body or describing certain approaches or techniques or whatever they happen to be describing or imbalances or diseases you could call them. Um, I like to bring it into simple English and into simple philosophy. So I personally adopt a lot of the elemental base as well as looking at the mind, body, spirit. I look at the human being as being especially the human body, as being encased of, you know, earth, water, fire, air, ether. And we, we look at how we can deal with these different elements and bring them back into balance so that the person feels happy, healthy, and well. Um, again, that's something Western medicine doesn't always deal with. It doesn't deal with things like, how do I feel about my life? Do I feel happy? Do I feel connected with my purpose in life? Do I feel connected with my soul? Or who I am? Do I feel like I'm disjointed? All these kinds of things Western medicine doesn't deal very well with. And so this is what I see with the RMT industry. They train people to be quite impersonal in the way they relate to people. Again, I'm not, I'm not here attacking individual RMTs because there's a lot of good people in the RMT industry, but I'm talking about the particular training, okay? So let's separate people from the training of what people are actually trained to do. Some people overcome that and, and are very nice people. Um, and I've met a lot of good RMT people. But what I'm saying is that the training does not teach people very well how to relate to a person, recognizing and feeling, uh, developing empathy. You know, in my system of massage, having an empathetic connection with people is very, very important. Feeling and sensing, and this is how, when we look at things like chi, it, it is an art form. All Chinese, Japanese martial arts are based on uh, the knowledge of chi and the ability to feel it. So we can see that um, Kung Fu, Tai Chi, all these kinds of things are about the cultivation of chi and the awareness of your own chi and the awareness of others' chi. Again, this is not something RMTs cover unless they do it separately. Okay? So our training is about that. It's about understanding. It's more like a martial art. It's more like about feeling what's going on for the other person and unblocking their blockages. And this is an art form. This is why we say massage is an art form. It's not just a science. Yes, there are scientific aspects to it, but also different people have different ideas of what science means, okay? How can you say, these people in the RMT industry, that uh, science says that she doesn't exist or that the, there's no such thing as a spirit in a human being? They cannot even understand the difference between a living and a dead body. That's my question to them. Okay, so what is the difference between a living and a dead body? Why don't you massage people that are dead, you know? Because uh, it wouldn't be very nice, for one. Uh, but also, it's like, okay, so what is that difference? They can't answer it unless they can see. Only a spiritual philosophy can say, well, the person's left their body, you know? So therefore, the body without the person is worthless. So my point being here is that there are different approaches. Our approach is a more mind, body, spirit. We, we t tend to emphasize that tuning into a chi, and it's an art form. It's something that can take some people many years to develop. You never fully should totally feel like I've got this all together. Because there's six billion people on this planet, and they're constantly changing. So every massage is different. Every massage should be designed to suit the person that you're working on. 
It shouldn't be that we follow just a routine massage. Every person that comes in, I'm going to do two strokes like this, I'm going to do two strokes like that, I'm going to do this particular technique, and then I'm going to do that. That's like kindergarten massage, and it's like, okay, that's better than nothing because you're making some connection, you're moving some blood. I'm not saying it doesn't do anything, but it's very, very um, kindergarten is how I describe it. When there's a whole world of massage out there, everybody should be treated as a unique individual. Everybody should be assessed for what can I do? You should be thinking as a massage therapist, what can I do to help this particular individual with their unique set of physical, emotional, and perhaps spiritual imbalances? And how can I do my best to help this person come to be more in alignment with themselves and more happy inside themselves and without physical tension, without emotional tension? This is how a good therapist is actually thinking. Okay? They're caring for the person and they're thinking, how can I help them? Not just teaching a routine massage that you do the same on every person. As I say, that can be great for the first couple days of a massage course. But these people shouldn't be graduating doing that. And they also, the thing about oriental medicine, is that the body is connected. Okay, we can see this in the system of reflexology. We can see this in the systems of acupuncture. We can see that, you know, a lot of back tension, for example, should not just be worked on by working on the back. It actually can come from the feet, which then travels up the legs, causes lower back pain. This is something that I've seen with RMT training that they don't even emphasize. I had a massage again in Toronto one time, and I told the person I had some tension coming up from my foot up to my back. She didn't touch my foot even though I asked her about it. And then she goes, no, I don't include that as part of my routine anymore. This is somebody with 3,000 hours of training. I'm like, this is part of your routine. You do the same thing. You interview me and ask me what my problems are, but then you just do a routine massage on me and ignore my problems. I wasn't impressed with that, that particular approach. And it seems like I've had several massages in Canada uh, from RMTs, and I've talked to a lot of people that have, and it, it seems like that's really common in the way they treat people. They don't understand, again, because they're just looking at muscles and bones. They don't understand that there's a connection between the feet, the back, the head, that the whole body is, is connected. But not just the body, but the person. They're missing out on the person, the spirit, the, the, the soul of the person, the emotions of the person. Again, they're treating a person just like a hunk of meat. And that's not what we believe is good. So that's where we again see that overtraining sometimes in, in the wrong method can actually be detrimental. Okay, So that's, that's a very important uh, thing to consider. And I'm not saying again that these people shouldn't be practicing. I think good luck to them. And I, good luck to the RMT industry if that's what people want to do and it's all one approach. And it's, it's great. You know, there's stuff that can be learned through them and they, they can name certain diseases like little, uh, like kind of mini doctors. And that's great. They have their particular place and they might work very well in a hospital setting or with referrals from doctors for particularly sick people and stuff like that. And they might um, do a particularly good job of it in particular circumstances. So I have no problem with them doing what they do. My problem with them is that they're trying to stop other people from doing what they do. And that's wrong. And that goes against the spirit of health freedom. It goes against the spirit of multiculturalism. It goes against the spirit of respect for other people and other cultures and other approaches. And it goes against the spirit of humility. Um, to, to just acknowledge that other people have something to offer and other cultures have something to offer. So this is where our, 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 our approach is. So uh, I don't want to go into uh, all about the details of our courses right now because we have that on other videos. Okay, so this is in particular addressing certain issues that have come up in our, our uh, teaching our courses in Canada and our, we've become obviously one of the most controversial schools in massage schools in Canada and I've dealt, you'll see a lot of debates between me and different people on the internet, it all gets very heated because it's very passionate. I'm very passionate about what I believe, which is health freedom and respect for other cultures and respect for the spiritual element in the human being. Um, and they're obviously very passionate to get the respect of their profession um, and their particular approach where they think that um, sometimes these philosophies of uh, mind, body, spirit or chi or something are somehow degrading to them being able to get the respect of modern medicine or my, modern what they believe is modern scientific thought, which again I've always said has an awful lot of limitations. Even Albert Einstein uh, recognizes so many limitations. I think when you study science, the more you realize about science is the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And that especially comes into knowledge of what is life, what is the human being, um, that sort of thing. What is the life force? What distinguishes a living body from a dead body? I don't think many scientists who are actually at the forefront of biology would even go there to even consider those questions. 
uh, that science actually has an answer for as such. Some would, and that's fine. There's all sorts of debates about these kind of things. And of course, they can enter into some very metaphysical realms, some religious realms, some spiritual realms, uh, all sorts of debates. My point here is not that, oh, we should be the ones dictating to everybody else what our philosophy is on life and healing and all that. Our point here is that we should have the freedom to practice and that the people that want to come and learn from our massage school should be able to and the people that want to then come and get treatments from our graduates should be able to. And that's it. You know, they can do what they want to do with these other RMT schools. You know, they can charge people their 20, 25,000 bucks for their training. If people are happy, great. You know, no problem. It's not my business, you know. But it's my business when they start trying to stop us practicing and, and for illegitimate reasons in my, in my opinion. Now, I'd like to address one other, one other issue to do with the Canadian massage industry and the Canadian health industry in general, and that is the issue of insurance. So, something we've also dealt with in, uh, in Australia is this whole idea that insurance should cover health. Okay, so my point here is that insurance originally was designed to cover a situation that was unexpected and expensive. So, for example, a shipper was shipping goods around the world and the ship sunk and all of a sudden he's out of a whole lot of money. Insurance was designed to cover those unexpected expensive um, events. Somebody has a car accident, for example, and they're in hospital and the hospital bills are very expensive. That's what insurance is designed for. Insurance is not designed for preventative medicine. And this is, again, one of the big differences between our approach and the RMT industry and some of the people that are trying to be massage people that are trying to be more caught up in the medical bureaucracy, what I call. Our approach is preventative medicine. Our approach is more like an investment. If you an investment into your health, you don't often need Western medicine except for extreme cases of emergencies, uh, car accidents, that sort of thing, which is what, what Western medicine tends to, to be better at. But with preventative medicine, it's like, it's like instead of putting my money into smoking cigarettes, I'm going to put my money into health food, to buying organic foods, to buying health foods that make my body healthy and my mind healthy. I might put my time and my energy as an investment into things that promote my health, both uh, mentally, physically, and spiritually. So by investing my time properly, I get a good result. And then I don't have to off hardly ever see a doctor, okay, for Western medical approaches. So... This is the point here with insurance, is that it's ridiculous to involve an insurance industry in preventative medicine. Like an insurance company is not going to cover you for going to the health food shop and, and buying you know, your tofu and your organic vegetables. Because they consider, well, you've got to buy food. That's part of living. It's part of a sensible decision. And that's how I see the best approach to massages, is as preventative medicine. Not wait till you get sick and have your insurance cover. Uh, cover it once your shoulder's totally frozen. What you should do is before your t shoulder gets totally frozen where you can't move it, or it's so bad that it's so easy to injure, what you should do is prevent that from occurring in the first place, which means getting regular massage to stop it. And of course, eating well and stopping smoking cigarettes and drinking too much alcohol and all these other things that are going to be health destructive. Okay, so engaging in preventative medicine, you shouldn't involve the insurance companies in it. Okay, it should be just one of those things, just like with your car. You know, you got to tune it up every once in a while. You got to change the oil. You got to buy new tires. Those kind of things. They're not covered by insurance because they're not unexpected. They're part of life, of maintenance of a vehicle, maintenance of equipment. Our body is 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 our most primary form of equipment. Okay, it, it's something we should be investing our time and our energy into preventing and making it healthy. It shouldn't be the realm of insurance companies. Why should it be just another layer of bureaucracy? It's 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 totally inefficient for the economy. It's like instead of just me paying a massage therapist directly, I got to pay my insurance person over here, and they have to hire some people to administer the whole plan, and then they pay the the massage person who spends a lot of time and energy filling out a whole lot of different forms. And then they pay them instead of me just giving the money directly. Again, it's just a total red tape bureaucracy that's bad for the economy. I've argued that before in Australia with healthcare funds that they have over there, and I argue that in Canada. I think it's totally ridiculous. Okay, insurance is not designed for that. Insurance is designed for when somebody's really um, unwell um, that they then get some treatment. So yes, there is a place for that in the massage industry where somebody is. Uh, you know, sick or they've had a car accident or there's some other problem and they don't have any money and they're, and they're covered by insurance. But that should not be the primary part of the massage industry. The best part of the massage industry should be prevention. Treat people, whatever it may be, once a week. Everybody comes in to get rid of the stress that they've built up to all the problems that they've built up. Or once a month for some people who don't have such a stressful life. 
and then they, they keep well, okay? But yeah, I can understand that the insurance companies might want to cover that, you know, those, those people who don't do that and then they get sick or, or for, by bad luck or whatever. You know, a nurse who doesn't get massaged and who's lifting heavy people and their back goes and then they, they get it covered by insurance. But then, it, of course, the insurance fund should recognize that different therapies, it's not all based on the number of hours of training, it's based on the quality, so they should be covering our treatments as well. In this case, they don't because they can't understand how we can train people so well in uh, 5, 10, 15 day courses. They should go and get treatments and, and understand that, of course. But my point being here is that that should be only a minor part of, of your clientele. So really, it's a, it's a re-education of society that's needed. Okay, so people need to, uh, as therapists, you need to re-educate your clients that, no, this is the best investment you can ever make to getting a high quality massage that is going to bring you back into a healthy state. Health isn't just an absence of disease. Health is about feeling in alignment with your spirit. Health is about feeling where you are leading the life that you're meant to be leading. And you're doing so in a way that is not filled with stress and tension and anger and different emotions that you may have. Not to say that there's not a healthy place for emotions in life, because there is. I believe anger can be used healthily to, pro to provide protection to provide boundaries from people that are trying to exploit you. I believe it's important to be able to be in touch with your emotions of grief and sadness and things, but it's not about holding them in from a long time ago. It's like feeling them moving on. Okay, so we, we deal a lot with emotions actually, but the point being here is that we have to look at what is health. You know, different people have different ideas of health. Um, some people may say health is a, I would say health is more feeling in alignment with your spirit and feeling the chi of the life energy flowing through your body, feeling no stress and, and no muscular tension. And it's not something like, okay, I've achieved health and I never have to look after it again. I know in my own life I could feel quite healthy and then some stressful event comes or uh, a week long of stress in one form and I feel quite tight, quite stressed. I need to then bring myself back into balance. So it's not just a case of I achieve it and that's it. It's a constant working act. But it's the most important investment you can ever make. Better than investing in a car or a house. I mean, nice house is great, but if you're all uptight and you're so stressed out and you've got headaches and you've got digestive problems and you got you feel anxious, you don't even half the time realize you're in a nice house. You may be thinking, oh, I'm just so worried about my headache or I've got this stress, this anxiety, all these different problems. So the most important investment you can ever make is your health. And that is from a mind, body, spirit perspective. Okay, so this is the kind of thing that we need to then communicate to our clients. Okay, invest in your health. The rest of your life will then come a lot better than what it would otherwise. Not to say that everything will be perfect. This world isn't, isn't a perfect place, unfortunately. There's often there's problems that happen all the time. But your life is going to be a lot better if you are healthy on a mind, body, spirit level. And that's what we're trying to achieve. And that is, in my opinion, it's the most important investment you can ever make. So, so many people tend to get caught up in these bureaucracies. I've got to appeal to the insurance people. I've got to appeal to these RMT people. The RMT people got to appeal to the medical bureaucracies. Hey, what's the most important thing here? The most important thing is get yourself healthy and then help other people to become healthy. Again, this is where there's too much mental activity going on and not enough heart activity, not enough grounded activity where people are looking at this particular issue from the right perspective or from a healthy perspective. It's all just scattered mental thoughts and, and, and getting caught up in different bureaucracies and things. But what's the goal here? The goal, this is why I say we have to focus on what our goal is. Our goal of massage is to help realign that person, to be in touch with their mind, body, and spirit. And that's the goal of how we as a massage school teach people to focus on, not focus on all these bureaucracies. For example, in Australia, when I first started practicing, there was no healthcare funds or anything. It was like it was all private, private industry. I massage people; they pay me. Pretty simple, eh? Pretty simple, you know. And then the tax office takes whatever they can out of my pocket. You know, typical. But that's how it is. Okay. Here, but why get this this confusion and this disorganization and this whole thing going on where you got this insurance, you pay the insurance company, you get a massage, the insurance company pays the massage therapist. It's a whole, adding a whole layer of bureaucracy that's totally unnecessary, a whole lot of people involved in this admin of this whole fund that's totally unnecessary, and a waste of time when the massage therapist could be getting on with just massaging people, which is what they're good at, rather than filling out paperwork, or spending, you know, two and a half, 2,500 or 3,000 hours of their life at some massage school, studying it just to get these, give these people these insurance rebates. 
It's ridiculous. That's three years full time that you could be earning money massaging people if you do our course. You could be sitting there, do our course, be practicing right away. You can still get insured for medical malpractice and all that kind of stuff if by some reason uh, this fluke chance happens or somebody comes in with a particular condition, you massage them, something goes wrong, you accidentally slip or whatever happens, that's called medical malpractice. You can get medical malpractice insurance after doing our course. No problem. So why not get on, start working. Everybody, most professionals have that if they have any money that somebody could sue them for. If you don't have any money that people can sue them for, you, you know, it's, you don't, may not need insurance at all. I didn't have it for the first 10 years, so I didn't have any money. <laughs> so if somebody sued me, they wouldn't get anything. Uh, but that's, that's up to you. You know, if you want to have that insurance, if you do have money, that's, that's fine. Uh, but, but the most important thing here is not that. It's about you getting on and being able to massage people to help them. There's a lot of stressed out people in this world who need a lot of help. You could be helping those people. Meanwhile, you're gaining a lot of experience. See, why, again, coming back to the whole idea that massage is an art form, what it means is the more experience you get massaging people, the better you're going to become. Okay? So you just build up that repertoire of experience of massaging people. There's always new people that come in with different conditions, different imbalances that you've never quite seen before. And you have to be working on them because people are not, don't fit into categories of disease. Even though these RMT associations like to say, oh, what do you do if somebody has spondylitis, this or that? Well, what I'd do is I'd treat them like a person and I'd find out where their tension is and how I could get rid of their tension and their imbalances. That's what I'd do. That's what I do for everybody. They like to create this fear, but everybody's different. You could take hundred people with the same Latin medical condition, named medical condition, and I would treat them all probably quite differently, or perhaps quite differently. I don't treat people as medical conditions, I treat people as people, and I look at each as, a, as an individual, and that again makes it an art form, rather than a standardized thing that you do the same treatment on everybody. That's how med medicine, I guess, tends to be practiced, right? They, okay, I've got this they practice it as uh, disease-based medicine. You know, it's all about, um, okay, you've got this disease, here's this pill. Okay? And that's how they, they, they learn in their textbooks and that sort of thing. Well, I don't practice it like that. One, I don't practice disease-based medicine. I practice health-based medicine, vitality-based medicine. Let's increase this person's vitality. And then when you increase vitality, often, you know, many diseases can go away. Not all. There's all, obviously different conditions that you can't treat. Now, that's one of the understandings of massage is to know what I can treat, what I can't treat, or what I can treat a bit and help but not necessarily fix. That's a whole other another issue. But the important point being here is that uh, it's, it's very important for people to, to realize that health freedom is, is extremely important here and that there are many different approaches to treating people. Again, my position is that massage is an art. We treat people as individuals. And the main thing is that we're trying to do here is find anybody's blockages and get rid of it. If massage is going to help somebody, then by doing that, it will help them. If massage isn't going to help, then you do that, it doesn't help. Well, I'm sorry, maybe somebody else could help you. Maybe your problem is based on your diet. Maybe your problem is based on something that's incurable by any way that I know how. You could try somebody else. But in 80% of cases of people that I treat, or a high percentage, I should say, I don't want to name the percentage, because I would say diet and stress are two of the most common forms of causing imbalances. So if you help a person's diet, um, then great, a lot of problems go away, and then you get rid of the stress and tension in a person. I reckon you've got like 80, 90 percent of people's diseases or mis imbalances, chronic diseases, that kind of thing treated right there between those two forms of therapy when done properly. So, but I look at everybody as an individual. If somebody comes in, I look at, okay, where's your tension? They might tell me they've got a particular condition of this particular condition or that particular condition, which is named according to Western medicine. I don't treat people like that. I don't treat people as diseases. I treat people as individuals. They might have a particular condition. It's good for me to know the contraindications for certain conditions, and that's something we teach. We teach people not to massage over varicose veins. We teach people not to massage certain different things. Well, there can be problems with people. You know, the cancer, if you massage somebody with cancer, sometimes it can spread. There's been a lot of conflicting evidence about whether massage is good for people with cancer. But we do teach people all about those things. But if it's not a contraindication, then what we, we should be focusing is on, as a massage therapist, is where are they tight in their muscles and how am I going to get rid of that? So they may be tight up here, but massaging up here might not get rid of it. When somebody's tight up here, it's often coming from their thumb. So we need to massage their thumb. Again, that's not something that um, 
a lot of RMTs even know. Something as simple as that, how the thumb tension connects with tension up here, which then connects with tension in the side of the head, because they're not looking at traditional oriental medicine enough. So anyway, this is my basic approach. There's something I wanted to say. We've had a lot of questions from Canadian students. We've had a lot of controversy uh, in uh, regards to some of these RMTs and these associations. Uh, similar sorts of cases, a little bit different with the U.S. massage industry with their LMT thing. But in, in general, what I see there in Canada is, is a lot of people wanting to be overly educated, but in the wrong way. They're wanting to be overly educated, in my opinion. Again, they have their right, they have their, their whole thing, and that's great, good on them. They want to be uh, mini medical practitioners, and that's fine. But that does not necessarily encompass the entire massage industry. The, a lot of the massage industry is preventative medicine, and a lot of the massage industry has respect for traditional medicines of Oriental countries or other cultures like Hawaii, and they recognize the mind-body-spirit aspect of medicine. Okay, so this is again where we have that uh, dispute or we have this problem with these people. Um, it's not because we're trying to force our view that everybody should practice like we are. I've mentioned that before. I've got no problem with them practicing. It's that they're trying to stop us. Okay? That's why all this controversy is there on the internet. They don't like us practicing what we do. Now whether you could say what's the motivation for them not wanting us to practice what would they do? Some, they would like to say it's all because they care about the public and we could hurt people and blah, blah, blah. Like I said before, everybody uses that when they want to control other people. My thing is, is that I, I personally believe either they're doing it out of ignorance, there's some people that genuinely perhaps do believe what, what we just said, um, but other people are doing it out of fear. Their fear of, co fear of competition, fear of new ideas, fear that their ego might be burst. Many people become, they talk about themselves I'm an RMT, that's the first thing. You meet them, hi, I'm an RMT, or I'm John Jones, RMT. It's like it's part of their ego. It becomes part of who I am. I'm an RMT, and they become very proud. So when people are trained in 5, 10, 15 days, and they're actually getting more clients, and people are going, wow, that was the most amazing massage, better than, then people's egos get shattered as well. People's egos get very affected, and they go, wow, I spent three years studying so hard to become an RMT, and how dare you do a 10-day course? and become equal to me. That's not fair. That's not on. I spent $25,000. So they get angry. They get angry because other people are threatening their sense of who they are, their ego, which we could call, you know. Um, I understand. I feel sorry for them that they spent that time and wasted all that time if they're not happy. You know, really, if they were not threatened by us, they'd be going, okay, that's fine. You know, I do what I do and they do what they do. But they're threatened. So why are they threatened? Because it's not because we're threatening their healing methods. We're not threatening them. We're not trying to stop them doing what they're doing. So they shouldn't be threatened about that. It's because their position in society. It's also like, why do people want to, you know, they want to rise up in the medical hierarchy. They want to become like a doctor. They'd love to be called doctors of massage. So people go, oh, you're a doctor. Wow, I give you my respect. So it's not about their motivation. Some of these people's motivation is not about healing others or caring for others. It's about getting the respect of people. And that's why I believe, again, not all people, but there's some people that are motivated out of that. They want the respect of other people. And so by calling themselves an RMT with pride and with this ego, um, you know, they feel worthy because underneath they obviously don't feel worthy without that title or, or for some reason they feel that they've earned that degree of respect by doing their three years at college and they want other people to respect them. And so then they're threatened by us because we come along and teach people in 10 days and we say to people, well actually we train people better than the RMTs do. So they get really upset about it. I can understand it. It's natural, right? Um, no problem. But again, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna vary what I think. I can train people really well in 10 days or my school can and even better in our 15 day program where people come and do my advanced course with me personally. I think, you know, I'm really confident but we've trained people extremely well, and I'm happy for them to practice on the public, as I have done in all the different countries that we practice in for the last 12 years. So I have no problem with it, and I think that neither do our customers, the people or the people of the customers of our students. They get exceptionally good massage. So the people that really have the problem with it are the people that are, you know, threatened. Okay, so poor guys, they invested 25 grand, three years of their life, which again, most people could probably earn, you know, 50 grand a year if they were practicing. So three years of their life is probably worth 150 grand, so they're down 175 grand uh, in lost earnings and in uh, course fees. You know, whereas our course, you know, you do all three courses and you're up for like four and a half, you know. 
that's quite a big difference and you've lost three weeks of your life you know not even lost it's usually a really wonderful experience for everybody they they learn so much they go through our courses are designed to help you go through your own healing journey as much as possible in that particular length of time as much as we can help you to do so and as much as you're willing to do so so people have the most wonderful experiences with our course and nobody really considers it a waste of time it was like people are wanting to come back people think it was a fantastic time now that's for 98 99 percent of people that do our course um, so the other one or two, yeah, some people they don't like it. Maybe it's too deep, maybe it's too confronting for them. Some people they find like the massage could be bringing up issues that they don't want to, emotional issues that they don't want to deal with or something. So maybe it's not for them. I'm not saying the massage, our style of massage is for everybody. It's a powerful style of massage and you have to be a certain level of maturity because especially with our abdominal massage, you're bringing up a lot of people's emotional stuff. Not everybody's ready for that, you know. Our course does tend to um, cater to more mature people. Not we get some 18 year olds straight out of high school but not every 18 year old is ready for a short course like ours you know because we're not giving them the whole college experience it's a it's an intensive course just for three weeks and then you're ready to start some people prefer the three-year college experience they get to meet the boys and the girls they get to you know talk and, and have fun and not their parents are paying for it and that's great you know our course isn't really designed for those kind of people it's designed for mature age people who want to get in and become a good massage therapist as quickly as possible and who really care about helping people in the most powerful and effective way possible and often that involves like deep emotional uh, transformation it involves a lot of abdominal massage where people are holding so much tension and anxiety and you get rid of that and people feel better so that's the specialty of our course so you know it isn't really designed for people straight out of high school that are just wanting a college experience okay so you know I mean you know great if you want to do that that's fine if you want to come to our course and you're 18 we have no problem with that uh, but we do encourage and expect you to have a certain level of maturity in dealing with different emotional problems but our course is more designed for mature people who want to change their career who decide that maybe their job isn't satisfying that they're doing and they want to do a job that helps and cares for people and they want to do it quick they don't have three years to waste at a college they don't have all this time and they just want to get in and massage people and they want to do so in a way that's simple and effective but power and powerful so that's really what our course is designed. It's very di so different. We're like on different planets from the, than, than the RMT industry. We really are. It's like when we debate with them, uh, discuss, because we, we have trouble discussing things together because we're, we're on such different wavelengths, you know, and I'm always happy to discuss things with anybody, but not when they try and stop me from doing what I'm doing. Then I get, I get, um, I, I, my fiery side comes out. I start to fight for my rights. I start to fight for the, it's not just my rights, it's not about me, it's not all about Brandon Rayner. This is about helping people. I know damn well that my massage has helped so many people all over the world and I want people to have that opportunity to experience that. And so that's why I get passionate about it. And uh, you know, I do fight uh, mentally and, phys and, and uh, philosophically with these people because I think people should have that right. So. You know, and I'm sorry if I offend people with that. I am a passionate person. Um, but, uh, you know, that's just how it is. So anyway, well, thanks very much for uh, considering our school. As I say, we've got other videos you can have a look at. You can have a look at videos about our style of massage. You can have a look at videos about the courses that we offer. Um, and you're also welcome to contact uh, myself or our staff with any questions that you'd like. Um, so to answer a lot of questions, uh, though, briefly, no, you cannot get... Um, insurance generally speaking there may be a few small insurance companies at the moment and it may change but insurance companies they are part of the medical bureaucracy and they tend to go for um, the, the big colleges when it comes to these three-year courses uh, if you want to be able to give those insurance rebates again I don't believe that it's necessary I don't believe it's part of the it's a good good idea to have that uh, but that's the simple answer. So if anybody's got that, that question, that's the answer. No, you can't. There are a few funds that do, and we are working with them to go, well, you know, have you considered uh, covering our fund? And so it might change in the future. But at the moment, that's how it is. And, uh, you know, in terms of uh, becoming an RMT, well, you can use whatever initials you want. If you want to call Rainer Massage uh, RMT, only in provinces where those, uh, those initials aren't regulated. Okay, so Ontario and BC, those initials are regulated, and so is the term massage therapist. So you have to use different terminology. There's no problem with practicing massage in any province in Canada. But the, t the two provinces, and perhaps, the, like I said, maybe Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, uh, but in Ontario and BC in particular, they have the regulation is over the term. So the term massage therapist or massage therapy 
is a regulated term. So when you describe what you do, you go, I'm a Rainer massage uh, professional, say for example, or I do Rainer body work or Rainer naturopathic massage. Um, so that's the only difference, okay? So you just can't use the term massage therapist. Again, I don't believe that. I, I think that's ridiculous. I think they hoodwinked a bunch of politicians in the guise of, oh, we're protecting our industry and all that, but the politicians had no idea what they were doing, uh, didn't understand all the issues involved. They got their law passed. Uh, so again, I don't believe it. I think the law should be changed, but that's how it is right now. And, and of course, all their associations are trying to push for other laws in other provinces, which I hope don't get passed. And I encourage you to write to your, uh, if you agree with what I'm saying, I encourage you to write to your member of parliament in these provinces and uh, object strongly to the restriction on health freedom that's happening in Canada and the, and the, uh, the lack of respect for multicultural approaches to, to, to health. So anyway, uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this, and I'm sure I'm going to aggravate a few people by uh, my talk today, and some people are going to love it. That's how it is. You know, I'm sorry, that's, that's my opinion, and uh, I'm sticking to it right now. may change it one day in the future, but I don't think so. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I hope you enjoy uh, this and our other videos, and uh, we welcome you to come and study massage at our school. And we look forward to it. And I look forward to uh, some of you keen students coming out to Hawaii, where I am now, and um, coming and learning massage here in a beautiful setting and uh, in warmer weather. <laughs> I'm actually Canadian myself, born in Ottawa, so I know about the cold weather. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, I like visiting there in summer more. That's uh, now I like to see the winter sometimes as well. But. Uh, uh, I do like the warmth here and the mangoes and the papayas and that sort of thing and the ocean and the sweet sea turtles. So we welcome you to come out, have a holiday in Hawaii, learn advanced massage. We also have our basic courses here taught by another Canadian teacher, Jason Loya, uh, out of Toronto originally, but he's based here in Hawaii now as well. And he teaches our certificate and diploma courses here. Uh, so if you do want to have a, a holiday or a, and get into another culture, uh, Hawaiian culture where we live, um, come on out to Hawaii and uh, we offer our courses a little bit cheaper here too because we are based here and we have more facilities. I have a two acre organic farm up the road overlooking the ocean where the whales and dolphins are swimming by quite often. Um, so you're welcome to come over, check that out. Uh, uh, we have accommodation nearby, we have camping accommodation on our land or we have uh, the Makaha Resort just up the road. You're welcome to come and stay there. Um, and then uh, you can learn the massage here, uh, the certificate and diploma courses with, uh, with Jason or one of our other teachers, and you can learn our advanced courses here with me. Uh, I do pop over to Canada uh, occasionally, usually in the summer. Um, no, I, I do like the winter sometimes, but uh, just kidding there. Um, and we have Terry and, and our other teachers that are teaching consistently our certificate and diploma courses across Canada. So there's plenty of options uh, to do our courses here overseas. We also teach in, in England, Ireland, uh, South Africa, Singapore. Uh, we're expanding soon into Japan, uh, Russia, Ukraine, a whole lot of different places, France. Uh, we are training up French-speaking teachers also, so uh, we will have uh, more opportunities to hold courses in uh, Quebec and uh, also in France. So without raving on too much, because once I get started, I can keep going. I'll, uh, I'll finish up and uh, say thank you again for coming. And uh, I hope to meet you guys one day. And please contact us with any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.